Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Robin Klebnik. I am the founder of Intern Boston. This presentation is a presentation that I enjoy giving to high school students and their parents. Uh, the name of the presentation is Why It's Time to Rethink Social Media. And the reason that I put together this presentation is we found with students entering our program that when we checked on their social media, we often found things that we wouldn't want employers to see. And we felt as young high school students were coming into our program, they hadn't properly thought about social media. And our goal in this presentation, the back part of this presentation, is to give students an opportunity to learn how to develop an authentic, discoverable online presence. So I will go to my first slide and we'll talk about how we get there. So the first thing we say to students is that colleges are looking at social media. In 2019, experts predict that close to 60% of all admissions officers will be seeking admission about candidates on social media. Uh, when we present this to high school students, they're shocked for the most part. The reason is the Common App. The number of applications received by schools is, in, is increasing at a much higher rate than the growth in the general population. Today, it is not uncommon for students to apply to 10 to 20 schools using the Common App. And it's very easy to do that. Individual schools have one or two supplemental questions. So it is very, uh, very often students are uh, applying to somewhere, a number of schools in this range. So if you look at the class of 2021, the application versus admissions rates, you see that schools are inundated with applicants. As a matter of fact, um, admissions, uh, admissions professionals are actually being um, evaluated on how well they uh, are able to predict the amount of students that actually accept the admissions. And uh, in the case of Temple University, I believe it was last year, there were um, at least one admissions officer fired because they overaccepted candidates and they ran out of housing. So this has become a very interesting science for admissions. They are overwhelmed with the amount of applications. And so social media has become an important way to differentiate candidates. It is no longer feasible for most schools to select students based on GPA, standardized test scores, and recommendations. For the top students, these essentially look the same. Colleges are interested in students of character who will actively contribute to their campus. Students are intellectually curious, passionately committed to extracurricular activities, and students who are leaders. With so many applications to look at, how do schools find that information? So colleges are paying attention to prospective students' social media presence on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and even Twitter. What are colleges and employers concerned about? They are concerned about hostility, harassment, and bullying. They're concerned, very concerned, about the safety of students, faculties, employees, and clients. They're concerned with avoiding negligence and lowering the risk of bad publicity. I'm sure that you're familiar with what happened at Harvard University. In, uh, in a private Facebook chat, students sent each other memes and other images mocking sexual, you might not have known the details of this, mm -hmm. mocking sexual assault, the Holocaust, and the death of children. Some of the mess messages joked about abusing children, uh, and others had punchlines directed at specific racial groups. One called the hypothetical hanging of a Mexican child, pinata time. 10 students had their admissions rescinded at Harvard. Does anyone know who Harley Barber is? January 17, 2018, a university, you might have heard about this, the University of Alabama student who posted videos to social media in which she repeatedly used the N-word and other profanities, she was expelled. Employers are also looking at social media. In 2017, what percentage of employees were screening applicants' social media pages? For purposes of this presentation, it's 30%. 
Today, many employers are starting to use third-party background screening companies. How far back can these companies legally look back at your social media? Does anyone know that answer? As far back as they know. No. So there's a law, actually. It's legal. Yes. Seven years. You knew that. Okay, next. What industries rely heavily on background checks? Finance, education, healthcare, law enforcement, security, and the answer is all of the above. Okay. What are high risk behaviors that could prevent you from being hired? Violence, hostility, harassment, unlawful activity like drinking or using drugs, discriminatory, discriminatory comments, sexually explicit materials, and bad-mouthing previous employer or other employees. In 2018, a prestigious financial services firm, you would recognize their name, denied interviews to 35% of their internship program because of social media background checks. This is what a social media background report actually looks like. So we worked with a company called Social Intelligence. They're the leader on social media background checks. And actually, um, what, what typically happens is when a background check is done on an employee, that company would normally outsource the social media aspect of that. And then the employer would be provided with a report. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, smells like weed on the bus, comment there. Um, it's my birthday and I can get high if I want to. So those comments are brought out and, and the risk factors are assessed by each employee. This is another um, example of a social media background. Check those posts were taken out, put on the report and provided to the employer. So what can get you fired? Does anybody recognize that name? In October 2nd, 2017, she, um, she was fired because she said that the Vegas, uh, Vegas, Las Vegas victims didn't deserve sympathy because country music fans are often Republican. Next. Justine Sacco posted this. When she landed in South Africa, she was told she no longer had a job. This one is self-explanatory. This is a high school presentation, so this one gets a lot of laughs. Next. Uh, this is a teacher. Posted this on her um, Instagram, I guess, listening to some dope tunes. Uh, smoking. Uh, an example, a former colleague of mine posted about how he's going to use up all the sick, sick leave and then quit. He posted at 9 a.m. and was fired by 11. A prospective employee at the company I work for had passed his interview and was told all he needed to do was pass a drug test and a physical. Someone found the new hire on Facebook and the guy had posted 20 minutes after the interview. Anyone know how to pass a drug test in 24 hours? I had to fire an employee for a tweet. He wrote about a customer. He tweeted the customer's full name would be a great name for a porn star. Three important truths about social media. You are never anonymous. Your posts will never necessarily disappear and anyone in the world can find every post, photo, and comment that you've ever posted. Once you post anything online, you are no longer in control of it. You don't know if someone will screenshot it, Snapchat it, repost or share it, use your photo with their own caption or just Photoshop it. You can't hide, getting off social media doesn't work. 60% of employers said they're less likely to call or hire someone if they can't find them online. And college admissions and employers are interested in your social media presence. So if you don't have one, it looks like you're trying to hide something. The goal for high school students is to build an authentic, discoverable, discoverable and informative digital presence for college and career. And that's what I talk about in the second half of this presentation. Any questions? In my last minute. Okay.